Tell me about your family. Tell me about your family. That might be a conversation starter when you go across the street to meet a new neighbor or after you have not seen a friend or a loved one for 40 years. Tell us about your family. Tell us how your family's doing. Everyone in every family tree has a story. This happens to be the family tree on my father's side. Every person on a family tree has a story. And you can be sure as Someone once said, some limbs on a family tree have beautiful blossoms, and other limbs have just a bunch of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> when, <clears throat> when digging in your family's history and lineage, you'll always learn something new and just might be in for some surprises. You might discover a great-great-grandfather was a horse thief, or that another ancestor was a circuit-riding preacher, or that another distant relative was first in line for the California gold rush. How many immigrated to the United States? How many in your family became doctors or politicians? or started family businesses? How many were penniless or resourceful during the Great Depression? How many children on your mother's side died in infancy or at an early age due to various epidemics or diseases or weaknesses? Any person stand out as one who beat the odds of hardships and toils unrelenting? Any person known to be the strong one in the family? Ever wonder 50, 100, 200 years from now how your children's 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 children will see you? Will you stand out as the influential one always looked up to in your family? Did you have the smarts? Were you master of many things? First to graduate from college? Were you a founding member of this congregation? Will you stand out or simply be a name on the whim with no particular provenance? Can you believe or are you surprised with what's revealed in today's gospel? Jesus was seen as the nutty, crazy, mad one on the family tree. His natural family thought he was not playing with a full deck, hardly the strong one. And I know that you've never actually called Jesus nutty. But isn't that really what's implied when we suggest we know better or are stronger than Jesus? Jesus, do you really expect us to believe that your word is the only truth? Or that you are the only way to heaven? Jesus, you want us to take your word that the infant brought to the baptismal font becomes a son or daughter of God? You must be nuts. Jesus, you're telling me my sincerity or my works count for nothing? Jesus, did you hear what my neighbor called me? 
Are you expecting me to forgive? The cross, such a strange way to save the world. Stop this madness. This is the first time in Mark's gospel that we hear of Jesus' family and there will be only one other mention of it in chapter 6 when the astonished synagogue worshipers ask, is not this the carpenter, the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, and are not his brothers and sisters here with us? Here in Mark 3, his family is seen as wanting to take hold of Jesus, thinking they needed to protect him somehow from his suspicious or suspecting crowds as well as assuring themselves that their honor and reputation in the community would not be destroyed. Why this is so important is the fact that Jesus had already, already caused enough eyebrows to raise when he healed a man on the Sabbath, no less. No, no, in terms of the law. No, Jesus isn't man. He is not nutty. He is the strong one. He is the strong one, proving many times over that he is mightier than Satan and the demons. The people had witnessed that, hadn't they, in the miracles? If Jesus is of Satan, as they said, and, and Jesus turns this around into a riddle, how could or why would Satan cast out Satan? That house would be divided against itself and could not stand. That's not how the war is won. No, Jesus' family tree goes back not to Beelzebul or Satan, but to God, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, victor over death, the strong one of the family who binds Satan and brings us into his family. Throughout his ministry, as the strong one, Jesus encountered those from various walks of life, from many different family trees. He dealt with divided houses and kingdoms. Families where conflict made for cracks and weaknesses in the home. Homes beset with inner turmoil. All sorts of demonic possession as well as physical and spiritual ailments. Not really any different from the time of Adam and Eve's fall in Eden. The cracks and the, the divisions are as real in today's world as ever. Marriages divided. Nations divided. Economy divided. Community divided. Humanity divided. Faith divided. Homes divided. Churches divided. This is a world where our outsides and our insides are divided. How to balance our work lives, our family lives, our prayer lives, our personal and social lives are just a part of the many pieces to life's puzzles, to family's puzzles. It seems we're always trying to put the pieces of our lives back together. It's not really that hard to understand why the crowds gathered around Jesus. That's why his family tries to restrain him and give him some space, even even time for a quiet, undisturbed meal. Why, they wonder, should Jesus get bogged down with all the broken pieces in families? Why should he be concerned that families are not what they are or not what God says they can be? Jesus always, always stands before us as the image of unity wholeness. He is the stronger one. He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He puts our lives and our houses back in order. 
Jesus redeems the family picture. He is the strong one who plunders Satan's house and all the evil that divides lives, condemns houses, and crumbles kingdoms. He's out of his mind, the crowd said. They accused him of allegiance to Beelzebul, but their accusations said more about themselves than Jesus. Their accusations revealed the depth of the conflict and division and weaknesses within them and within our lives. Acknowledging our brokenness, our broken lives, shattered and fragmented by anger and resentment, greed, insecurity, sorrow, loss, fear, envy, guilt, acknowledging that we are under bondage and beside ourselves and cannot bind the strong evils and save ourselves, that is the beginning. Acknowledging that is the beginning. The beginning of wholeness. A person who is beside himself or herself needs the help of one who steps in and takes charge of them. We may try to take charge of Jesus, but to no avail. We are too weak to control his word or his spirit. We can't make him fit into our boxes or categories. Every attempt to discount his miracles and mercy or avoid the cross fails. Christ is stronger than any evil that fragments our lives. He binds the divisions, heals the wounds, and refashions us by His grace and forgiveness. There's nothing about your life or my life that cannot be put back together by the love of God in Christ. Jesus alone has the power to take charge of us, working through the power of the same one who created the heavens and the earth, and empowered by His Spirit and forgiveness of sins, we set out to do the will of God as Jesus' family. Come along, family of Christ. Come along, redeemed to be His brother and sister and mother, united in doing the will of God, standing with the strong one of the family who traps Satan and unfolds the good news of God's kingdom among us. To every family tree. And to the world. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.